please tell me that we're smart enough here to know not to put period blood on our face. Or please tell me that we have gotten past the point of lemons and coffee scrubs. I am someone who literally did put lemon and papaya on my face uh, back in that one time, but let me tell you, I have come a long way. And as an esthetician who literally first went to aesthetic school in 2009, <laughs> I have tried a lot of stuff because I was desperate to get rid of my acne, but I have also learned a lot of shit, and I will not put certain things on my face, nor will I buy or try things with certain ingredients or certain procedures. Now, as a medical esthetician, I have access to some really exciting treatments and some really exciting ingredients. And there's one that I absolutely love and will do on others, and maybe even myself in the future, in clinic professionally, but that I will not touch with a 10-foot pole at home. And then there are others that are just questionable no matter who you are and how you're using them. And as your resident medical SD and acne big sister bestie, I need you to listen. <laughs> I need you to be a smart skin intellectual and understand when people are just doing things for internet hype versus when they're actually worth it. Because even Safia Nygaard tried an amazing product uh, that I wouldn't waste my money on. And shockingly, no, we're not gonna be talking about period blood. I swear, I freaking hope this is not actually period blood. I, I know that some people have actually done that. Um, infection, just just don't do it. I'm hoping this is the Ordinary's AHA, BHA peel and they're just pretending it's period blood. But you know, with the internet these days, I can't, we cannot be sure. Now, another thing that we're not even gonna waste our breath on is lemon. You already know why that's bad and if you don't, go watch this video. However, we do have to talk about lemon scrubs. It is mind boggling me. Mind boggling me, it is mind boggling to me that in today's day and age, we still have lemon scrubs. Starface is an amazing brand with some amazing products. They have pimple patches in the shapes of stars that not only help to cover your pimples, but make you feel good about having acne as you get rid of it. It's okay to love ourselves and love the process, even if we are a work in progress. But Starface, done did launched, oh my God, I'm burping because I'm so disgusted by this, a lemon scrub. Why? <laughs> Starface, a good brand? What, what made you think this is a good idea? And this is just where we get into the topic of good brands do bad things. Good people can do bad things too. I am of the belief that people should be judged on how they fix their mistakes or take care of their actions rather than the initial thing they did. And with brands, um, I hope the same too, but like right here, the lemon <laughs> scrub, it is today of the month of the year and I do not understand how there is so much skincare education out there and this is still for sale on Target shelves. You will not see me buying and using lemon scrubs, which yes, even includes the Ula Henriksen lemon scrub that I actually kind of almost had a love affair with. I was like, absolutely not. And then I tried it to test myself and it's not like a jagged scrub. It was actually somewhat decent. But when we look at lemon, when we look at how irritating it is, and when we look at the act of physical exfoliation, removing dead skin cells from the top of the skin so that other things can penetrate and then shoving irritating lemon in the skin, are we just asking to make our skin worse so that we have to go buy more skincare products to try to make it better to compensate for the damage that we have caused? Lemon scrubs are not going in my cart anytime soon and I sure as hell hope that they are not in yours. And if they are, I hope they're working for you. And if they're not, this, this is your wake up call. This is your sign from the universe to maybe switch out that product. If you want a gentle, inexpensive exfoliant, I would recommend three of these less expensive and less harmful for your skin. The next also started as a personal choice. And then as I started looking into things and looking at the rest of the internet, I was like, oh, oh no, she not crazy. Well, maybe she a little crazy, but she not made your skincare crazy. This is actually happening. <laughs> snail mucin. You've heard me speak about it in this video and this video, and if you haven't, I'd highly recommend watching those next. But snail mucin is not in my routine just because of the way that they wash the snails or put them on electric mats, but it's because snail mucin has actually been breaking people out. That's right. There are so many people, specifically on TikTok, who are like, hey, I'm trying this snail mucin and it is making my skin so much worse. We've actually done a TikTok breaking down why that happens, but the TLDR is if you have fungal acne, aka 
from folliculitis because fungal acne actually doesn't exist. We've done a video on that too. But if you have this monomorphic, basically these little white pimples all over the face that look the same, that is technically a yeast infection, you bet that snail mucin products could be triggering that and making it worse. And if you're allergic to mites, like dust mites, and you're like, why, why the f is snail mucin making my face just itch and red and irritated? You might be allergic to snail mucin just the way you are to dust mites. And if you don't know if you're allergic to dust mites or snail mucin, but the snail mucin is making your face feel all sorts of no, no, I don't like this, you might be allergic to dust mites and you should definitely see an allergist. But so many people are like, holy sh this oopy goopy snail mucin is not working for me. I have found two alternatives that I am f***ing in love with. One is from V Green. It's a snail mucin yam serum with no snail. And then if you actually want that goopy, gloppy, glug glug texture, there is a fermented bean essence from Korea, literally fermented beans that give you all the snail goo without the allergies and without the questionable extraction methods of snail in wash machine, snail on electric blanket, or farmer who um, suspiciously tickles his snails. If you do not know about the farmer who tickles 60,000 snails, um, might I please recommend you watch the video that we did on this very topic. Snail mucin, not buying it, not trying it. You know that we have to talk about collagen strings and collagen sprays and pads. Like this is just, this is just so questionable. And I feel like this is the one that gets people. People know that collagen is so good in our bodies and for our skin. Our skin is made up of collagen. It's the strong stuff. It's responsible for our skin's structure, the most abundant protein in our bodies. But people see collagen in skincare and they think, ooh, take my money. <laughs> and then people go on TikTok or Instagram or the interwebs and they see suspicious, very intriguing collagen threads melting into people's foreheads and the wrinkle that was once there is suddenly smoothed out. Or they see these amazing little face masks and people spray them on and they disappear and it's like a magic trick and you're like, oh, I want to try that. For $130, baby, don't buy that. Because not only does collagen not absorb into the skin when applied topically, but a lot of these products can be doing more harm than good, especially if they have fragrances or irritants, or if they're just f***ing up your wallet. So literally, one of the weirdest thing has been these collagen strings that people like place on the forehead and it like erases wrinkles. Please, whenever you see this on social media, notice that you don't see the whole picture. You don't see whether or not there's literally a set of hands pushing someone's forehead and creating those wrinkles in the first place and then smoothing them out after. There are so many editing tricks and tips that these people use and then they're like, oh, go buy this collagen string link in my bio. I have no problem supporting a creator and buying something from the link in their bio if they are being upfront with me, if they are being honest with me, if they are not using Photoshop and filters and literally pinching their foreheads off screen and then being like, oh, the collagen string smoothed it out. No, it didn't. No, it did not. Even Safia Nygaard and James Welsh, people I love. If you don't follow their content, Fix your priorities. Go subscribe to them right now. And if you want to subscribe here for more of this, then you can. And if you don't, sayonara. But you need to make sure that your priorities are in line, which means sunscreen, Safia Nygaard, and James Welsh. Well, James Welsh did an entire video on these very questionable face mask collagen type thingies with the spray. And then Safia Nygaard went out and spent $120 hairs on this stuff. And she had fun. Don't get me wrong, it's fun. But is it giving you $120 worth of skincare benefits? No, baby. Collagen at its best is moisturizing. Holds on to moisture. Good job. Probably equivalent to the $5 moisturizer you can get at CVS. However, if you really want the benefits of collagen or collagen building, look for retinoids, look for vitamin C. Those are the ingredients that have been medically proven to help build collagen both in your body as well as when applied topically. Now, there are fragments of collagen like vegan collagen or hydrolyzed collagen. Basically, the collagen is broken down into its components, specifically polypeptide chains or amino acids. Those are small enough that those can penetrate into the skin and work. And they can have anti-redness or anti-inflammatory or wound healing properties or collagen building properties. But if you're just buying straight up collagen, slapping it on the skin, spraying a bunch of stuff on it, it looks cool as <laughs> But honey, if you're actually looking for results, that's not where to go. So do like a medical SD, turn and learn those products and save your money. This is something that is not getting my coin. Now, this actually brings me on a tangent because when we speak about threads, we can also speak about thread lifts. That's right, people literally put like barbed fishing wires in their skin, specifically PDO Max, if you wanna know which ones I'm familiar with. Um, but these threads can literally snap inside the skin. We're not talking about that, we're talking about the collagen threads that you see on TikTok. Like they make a little mustache and they like, oh, wrinkle be gone. 
that's not how it works. Now, thread lifts can actually erase wrinkles unless they get infected or unless they snap. And if you want a video on why I no longer do and will not touch thread lifts, subscribe and let me know and I will do that. And if you want a video on the procedures I have gotten done, that also exists. Literally, the description box is like a magical treasure trove of links of videos that you may not have seen that are gonna save you a lot of money and a lot of headache and just a lot of internet bullshit that we should avoid. Now let's talk about the last thing, the one that I will avoid, but that I'd actually get done professionally and that I have helped other people do professionally. Does anybody know what this is? Hey, hey, have you been here long enough? Do you know what I'm going to say? We need to talk about these things that can cause infection in the skin. The ones that Kourtney Kardashian rolls across her skin and then tries to sell us for $300. These are microneedling tools and they are specifically the little roller ones. Now, let me break this down real easy. Needle, Big ouch, right? Big ouch sometimes makes skin rebuild collagen, but big ouch done wrong make big infection, bad time, no do want. There are so many people out here selling microneedling tools and devices that roll across the skin. They cause these major tears in the skin. They're not the punch needles. They're literally the rolly ones. You're creating a giant wound in the skin. People are not sterilizing them properly and bam, they get infections. They get keloid scars. They spread red acne bacteria from one pimple on their cheek to the pimple on their face and they make it worse. Not to mention Staphylococcus aureus. Did you just hear about the teenager in Brazil who literally died because she popped a pimple on her face? If you don't, follow me on TikTok and do not pop pimples in the triangle of death. Story for another day. But these needles on the skin are so harmful if done by the wrong person at home, but are so helpful when done right and by a professional. My microneedling device of choice is Secret by Qterra. It's literally a stamp punch microneedle that not only has microneedling, but it has radio frequency, which basically heats up the deep layers of the skin and promotes collagen and wound healing. Along with the microneedles, bam. Like if you wanna look like a hard boiled egg, Secret by Qterra, done by medical professionals in a professional setting with sanitation and sterilization and proper care, that'll fing do it. But a lot of people see these amazing results, they're like, I wanna look like the fing hard boiled egg, and I have acne texture and scars, blah, blah, blah. They go, they buy these questionable needles online, and they start rolling them across their face, not realizing they're prone to keloid scars, they're not sanitizing or sterilizing them properly, and they're creating more damage for themselves in the long run. Absolutely detrimental. And it is so devastating as someone who's literally helped people fix the issues from doing this at home. Like if you're microneedling over acne, you know that that can spread? If there's Staphylococcus aureus or other bacteria, other microbes, funguses, things that live naturally on our skin and you're spreading them in other places and letting them grow out of control, horrible mistake. And there are so many people that have f***ed up their skin and they have to pay even more money to come get it taken care of professionally and get on antibiotics or deal with long lasting scars that are much, much, much harder to get rid of rather than to get your hands on one of these questionable devices. Unless you are trained by a medical professional, unless you are trained, unless you're an esthetician or unless an esthetician or a medical professional or a person who knows how to microneedle actually guided you, told you about proper PPE, sanitation, sterilization, the difference between sanitation and sterilization, how to use these things, how to not use a dull needle, how to not use the questionable roller things, how to use a stamp instead. Unless someone is teaching you that, don't do it. And it is just devastating to see people like me, upset with their acne, upset with their skin, resorting to these desperate measures because you're desperate to get this off your face and then ending with something even worse. Speaking of desperation, that's probably the last thing that I'll never buy are these overpriced things. You ever, we just had this Nordstrom sale. Don't get me wrong, I love Nordstrom and I love a good sale, but so many of the products at Nordstrom are beyond questionable. La Mer, not spending my money on it. Now, my therapist actually just had this conversation with me. She was like, Cassandra, you use a lot of terms like never and always, and we have to be very careful of binary thinking. And I was like, God, you're not wrong. I know never say never because I'm telling you that I'll never buy or try these things, but I might if it's to show you how they are or to put them under a microscope or to really demonstrate what's going on here for the sake of curiosity and science-based learning. So if you are a curious cat and you want more science-based skincare, you know where to subscribe, you know where the treasure trove of all of the videos I mentioned are, and hopefully you now know the things that I will never, <laughs> unless it's for a YouTube video, never ever purchase in my life or my career as a medical esthetician. Now you know. And I hope this goes without saying, but do not put period blood on your face, okay? Okay, friends, love you. Bye.